We moved then uh, to D.C., was there six years. I was like, oh, okay, I'll go back to Iowa. My husband was like, we need a big adventure. We'd gone to L.A., mm -hmm. and uh, every time you go with President Obama, of course, you're flying over all the traffic. It's a really, like, blissful place. It's <laughs> surreal. It's a surreal <laughs> experience when you get to travel with Obama <laughs> over... Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm loving this right now. So, <laughs> so, so pretty much L.A. looks really good to you. Yeah. Um, I actually got recruited for a job with the Los Angeles Times. Oh, nice. uh, it was at the time Austin Butner and Eli Brode mm. were considering, Eli Brode was thinking about buying it. Mm. Austin Butner was in as publisher and I had seen the deterioration of our uh, press corps at the White House and mm. thought this is troubling, right? Because you need information if you're going to make good decisions. And, yeah. um, <laughs> and so I was recruited by saying, oh, you know, we want this news organization to cover the good as well as the bad, but to have a business model to do it. Okay. And I was like, you know, this is interesting. I'll do it. I, we want a big move to California. And then four and a half months after I got there, they fired the publisher who had recruited me because Eli Broad had put in the other bid to buy it and they didn't take the bid. So it was, I, I thanked them for bringing me to this beautiful city, mm. but I think they wanted me to be on the same page that he was bad for the organization and I was not. Mm. In fact, now he's trying to take over LA. So he is superintendent of LAUSD and he's trying to improve okay. the schools. So I am like, okay, on board for that so fight. We, okay, so we have to talk. <laughs> how, how, first, Joanna, yeah. I want to thank you so much for joining us here yeah. at Telegraph For our interview, uh, for our viewers right now, we're here with Joanna Masca the former head of the White House press advance under Barack Obama. Yes. Under President Barack Obama. It was an extraordinary experience. I, I have to tell you that I'm, I'm one, it's a pleasure to meet you. <laughs> um, with the state of uh, the media today, uh, I really am interested in knowing two things. How do you see the world and where uh, Donald Trump and his phenomenal marketing skills. Yes, he does. Huh? Um, he, In fact, he, I said that on Fox News like last weekend. Okay. <laughs> he don't has, underestimate his marketing. He is probably one of the best marketers, born and raised New Yorker, so I've seen him throughout <laughs> some time. And uh, you focus on your area, so no wonder he won uh, the middle of America. Yeah. The outer line, we knew a uh, fast talker. Yeah. But, how, but get it, stay, staying focused a little bit here, yeah. um, how do you find the influence of media in the world of politics against such a great marketer like Donald Trump. How do you battle something like that? So there's a few things that I want to talk about that we just touched on, which is media, which is a real interest of mine. And I worked with the world uh, press corps with President Obama. Mm -hmm. And I saw here in the U.S. our media landscape changing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, technology has really um, changed a crucial newspaper industry. Investigative reporting um, doesn't always have the funding that it needs to be successful. We count on little bloggers and journalists and big Who bloggers and journalists. Who are paid often exactly. for their work unless they hawk products no. or do things that, you know, before mm -hmm. were not journalistically ethical. Ex and yes. I was in journalism school mm -hmm. for, that's my background, was mm -hmm. uh, journalism school at the University of Kansas. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really important for uh, credible news organizations to have a business model. And- um, Can I ask you a question? Is yeah. that how you got involved in crypto? Actually, no. How I got involved in so that was that was so, a so, good point so, there. So I'm uh, okay. <laughs> I have a lot of interest. Yeah, see, I, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> here. Let's go, let's go. I'm here there? for you. Financial <laughs> technology, government technology, uh, um, healthcare technology, all really fascinating to me. Mm -hmm. um, freedom of the press is one of the most important things to me, right. and equality. Right. Right? right? These are like core elements. Yes. Having good, solid media because it's so imperative to our youth and their education and their experience. I often say like, as a young person, I was more influenced by Michael Jackson than I was Ronald Reagan. Absolutely. And so all of these things actually work together mm -hmm. in my mind. And I don't think we're at a point of perfection in any of them. So is it more about perfection or is it more about creating those cogs 
for that Michael Jackson, Ronald Reagan relationship so that we can better reach the core dem. Yes, yeah. and, 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 and figuring out, like, it, it, this is the thing is, innovators have to be allowed to innovate, mm -hmm. but there also have to be some protections right. in terms of things that are crucial to our, uh, you know, w democracy to our okay. republic, to the United States of America. Regulation it, is not such a bad word. It's not. Right. And Never. if you look at Ireland, you know, yeah, they have a 25% tax or a low right. taxation, okay. but they also have workers' rights and right. regulations. Right. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's um, been just an extraordinary privilege for a curious girl from Galesburg, Illinois, <laughs> to get to uh, meet all of the people who are innovating in these spaces, mm -hmm. want a more perfect union, mm -hmm. and then figure out if there are ways we can work together to achieve that. I, I have to ask, how, have you ever looked at the current state the way it is right now, and if crypto where it is now and blockchain where it is uh, right now in 2018, if it was three years into your time into the when you were in the office under Barack Obama, uh, what kind of policies would you would you have pushed for? What type of uh, industry technology pushes would you look to further blockchain and crypto? Yeah. I mean, I think we're going to talk about trust later mm. on stage. Mm -hmm. And I think um, that's one of the most core fundamental issues we have with crypto and Absolutely. blockchain right now. Absolutely. Is trust. Yes, yes. And I actually. Can you explain think, that just for two, just, yes. just two seconds in, in trust? Are you speaking about um, if I say to you, I owe you $1,000, right? And I owe you a thousand dollars, and I say, I'm going to give this to you via PayPal. Right. You trust that statement. Yeah. 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 yeah exactly. If I tell it you to trust you, that. Right. but yeah. you say I'm going to give you that in crypto, you're going to be like, Ah, uh, what, what are the chances? <laughs> so as an economy, I mean, you already start like, looking yeah. at it. Yeah. <laughs> and our speculators are going, yeah. just thank you, Lord. Yeah. And the rest of the group, the the ones that are actually looking to engage in economies of every day, how do I bring that into my savings? How do I prepare for my kids' college tuition? How do I buy groceries with that? How do I make my car payment with that? Yes. So when we look at trust, we, we're, we're, tell me if you agree with the statement, we're looking at the overall architecture of how I can engage with that money exactly and get to my result and right now it's not yeah, you say, yeah. I, I, oh absolutely I mean I just I was speaking to I was at this um, birthday party the other night and there were all sorts of different people and one was an economist who was I think nearing 80 mm -hmm. and um, I was I was saying okay so I'm going to a blockchain conference you know what do you think and he's like oh there's you know never a future for crypto right and there are a lot of people mm -hmm. who uh, still think that. And um, I think a lot of them are still in Congress and in uh, many places yeah. within the U.S. Yeah. In, uh, I mean, even at, um, I was at a summit uh, where there was a California state lawmaker saying there will never be a day where, you know, crypto will be the, the, the regular. And I think that um, until you have people who are actually uh, believers in mm -hmm. the technology, trust the technology, um, and feel like it's in a place where they can trust the technology, we probably are going to have that mindset. Mm -hmm. And that actually is probably pretty detrimental to the impact that blockchain and uh, this you know, technology can have. Okay. Um do you still keep in touch with Barack? <laughs> Tell him I, I said actually, hello. I saw Mrs. Obama not long ago, oh, which wow. was a privilege because she is Amazing, phenomenal. To say the least. I mean, I was driving <laughs> minivans with her back in Iowa when wow. I was just telling the stage. It's like everybody, you know, now is like, oh, the, we struggled to get 12 people to come out to see Mrs. Obama in the early days of Iowa. I remember you, I, I saw something you telling that story. That's an amazing story, She's by the way. She's extraordinary. Yeah, yeah. But we struggled to get people to come out to see her. And, and you know, that's what I've learned about building up that enthusiasm mm -hmm. for things. How did you overcome that? Well, people say that it was technology, but it was not. It was engagement. Mm -hmm. I truly believe that that's one of the um, that's one of the reasons that I mean the the last loss of uh, Clinton. Um, I was teaching at USC. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and I said that I thought that Trump could win. I mean, you and I both ad admire with, a, like, I have a Arms you know, pers e e e perspective <laughs> that it's despicable, but I, I, I see what he's doing. Absolutely. And I think he played into some of the fears, um, but I think that for those who are fearful, he actually had what was an optimistic message to them mm. because they mm. felt like they were left behind right. and they want America to be great. And I want America to be great. I think most of us want America Absolutely. to be great. Absolutely. And I think that unfortunately, um, where the Clinton campaign followed some of our data mm -hmm. and our technology, uh, some of the engagement was lacking. And we see that even in Wisconsin or Michigan or um, you know, some of the states that they need in-person engagement. People need in-person engagement. So when we're talking mm. about technology and revolutions, people need that in-person engagement to figure out, is this legit? Right. Is this something I can trust? Mm. And that's, I think, going to be pretty core to changing the world. Uh, <laughs> this may be a little crazy, but would you take any uh, pages out of the playbook of the current administration and apply it to the folks that have fear and doubt in blockchain and crypto and using that as an approach? Um, so a couple things. I think that in terms of government, um, while it's a short term win mm -hmm. for this kind of uh, tactic, I think it's a long term loss. So though I, you know, believe that um, the Trump administration has uh, done some innovative things in marketing and getting their message out. Um, it undermines some of our core... Uh, American values? Yeah, yeah, our core fundamental, you know, like there's a reason why there's a free press. There's a reason why you need to be held accountable, mm -hmm. that absolute power corrupts absolutely, and you need to be questioned all absolutely. the time. And so um, for me, in terms of uh, democracy, I would never take those uh, lessons and apply them. Good. But when you're, when you're asking about the fears that people have, how do you overcome them? So there's two ways, right? You can, you can play into those fears and then be like, but, and I don't think that's gonna work. Right. Like, I think that, that at the end of the day, it's the optimism mm -hmm. And what can this do for people? So how, how this is a good, you have these obstacles. When you see them, should you retreat? You know, you look at video games. When you run across an enemy, yeah. you know you're getting closer to the goal. Yeah. As you encounter more and more uh, uh, conflict, right? No, you, yeah. You, you realize that you're, that you're getting closer to the end goal. What advice do you have for a lot of the folks in uh, the blockchain and crypto world, they come across these obstacles, whether it just be friends and families of what are you doing? Yeah. Whether it be oh, yeah. uh, investors and the, uh, that, that these CEOs are encountering, ICOs have failed, 60% in the last yeah. six months yeah, have yeah, failed, yeah. right? How do you, what, what do you give them for encouragement? You know, fi find the route to yes. Mm. So I didn't take no for an answer. And um, with President Obama, I never took no for an answer. When okay. I was representing him, I was going to find a way to yes. And you didn't take no for an answer from President Obama. I, I mean, am <laughs> like, I, I, listen, I want the playbook on this one right here. You are not Cliff Notes, please. I will work for your campaign. You will put me on. You I know, am loyal. <laughs> I, I have to say, President Obama is one of the most extraordinary leaders, and I am so blessed to have Absolutely. gotten to work with him. Absolutely. And he said early on, we had a time where, you know, he had... Uh, done an interview and said something that he regretted a little bit and, and he said you know i'm never going to be a perfect person none of you are going to be a perfect person but we're going to try harder every day mm -hmm. to be better for the american people and that's what we did okay. um when you're talking about you know how do you push through like the people who are successful they encounter a lot of obstacles and even after you get past those obstacles, there are a lot of obstacles. You've just reached that <laughs> level of obstacles. That's all you yeah. encounter. Now it's the new level. Yeah, I hope you exactly. learned because there's a new level of them. Absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. Um, you know, you have to know that there are going to be people who are just going to not be for you. And that's OK. okay. But you have to find those who can support and can make your dream a reality and go work with them. Mm -hmm 
to, to find the solution that's going to work for the majority. You mentioned something about you and um, uh, former First Lady Michelle Obama, Mrs. Michelle Obama, excuse me. Yeah, Mrs. Um, Obama. Excuse me, Mrs. Amazing. Michelle no, Obama. Of course. And <laughs> the micro reach that you had to engage yeah. when everyone th thought it was about technology. Technology was a byproduct that was a vehicle. The real touch was the small forums, the speaking in, with, with the families yeah. and building that. Building. Um, do you suggest folks build small crypto communities yeah. within their, in, in their hometown organization and, yeah. and reach out more? Yeah, if you want to look at how any movement is successful, you have to get a following. Mm -hmm. And um, there are ways to get followings online, but um, it's, it, it falls fast. Right. Right. So we Short at our attention. firm talk mm -hmm. about, you know, like uh, to really build that currency that you need mm -hmm. when, because something's going to go wrong. Every time you get into anything, something's going to go wrong. Absolutely. And you have to build that confidence, that trust, that yeah. currency with your, you know, uh, small groups, with your larger groups, with your larger groups as you grow to explain what is going wrong as you're trying to bring change to fruition. Is this part of the, the Global Situation yeah. Room? Is yeah. this part, so please, tell me more about, <laughs> by the way, superb branding. <laughs> what I so mean I, on I, point, I that credit, was got, oh, that, you got I, that I one. I credit that all <laughs> to my colleague, Brett Bruin. Brett, so <laughs> great job, Brett, <laughs> nailed that one. <laughs> so, so Brett um, was a diplomat. We worked together when he was at the National Security Council. Okay. He actually was involved in really interesting uh, I issues with the National Security Council, even going back to like when Boko Haram took the girls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The initial response was, let uh, bring back our girls. Right. And he was like, this is not good because it's going to scare people mm -hmm. into not like letting their girls go to school. Uh, and the ver that plays into the very hands of, you know, right. and so he uh, and uh, many others were involved with the Let Girls Learn campaign and a number of like, OK, what can we do? Right. Mm -hmm. um, we always try to look to that route to yes. Okay. Um, and figuring out ways we can, you know, help uh, companies and organizations, um, individuals who have big dreams, mm -hmm. um, achieve them this with that power like a, of community. That's a big campaign. I mean, we have a lot of campaigns. So I am walk working me through, on yeah, equal rights I want for to hear women it all. and yes, men absolutely. <laughs> because I think men and women deserve to have equality in the U.S. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. we actually don't. We don't have equality in the U.S. We are the only country in the G7 without it specifically spelled out that regardless of sex, you have equality. Wow. We don't have it. Wow. Uh, the 14th Amendment was never intended for sex equality. In fact, it's the only, it's the first amendment that they inserted the word male into the Constitution. Let's we'll talk Lots about 13th debate. also, but we'll go move yeah, on from there. All okay. Of, <laughs> there's all sorts of issues with our, with yeah. You. Yes. But, you know, I think that there's, that's just opportunity for improvement. And okay. that's always going to be my mentality. Tell me something about the clients at Global City, the ones you can speak of. Yeah. What, what type of yeah. clients are you, you helping? No, we work with, um, with organizations like uh, Nisha Biswal just took over the U.S.-India Business Council. Okay. Anyone who wants to have a footprint in the U.S. and India mm -hmm. and really the Indo-Pacific uh, region should be paying attention to what Nisha Biswal is doing. Okay. She's a it, awesome um, intelligent mm -hmm. uh, woman who's gone into uh, the U.S. Chamber mm -hmm. uh, with that voice um, to really innovate within the U.S. Chamber. So some of them are legacy organizations that okay. are looking to innovate. Some of them are innovators mm -hmm. who are looking to, you know, figure out a way that they can strategize one foot after another, getting to that place where they have real global impact. Okay. And we work with them. All right. So we have Any, a core uh, of U.S. former U.S. ambassadors we work with. Um, who are uh, very helpful. Um, 2020, great. working with anyone on that? <laughs> I can't I say that I know. am. No, you know. I want to know. Uh, I I said after I worked with President Obama, a candidate would have to be really special for me to yeah. actually sign on to their candidacy. Yeah. I am thrilled about you have you know new voices from across the you know uh, the different uh, communities we have in America running mm -hmm. for office, which is one of the most exciting byproducts I uh -huh. think of this administration. Absolutely, is that we have uh, men and women from all races, religions, and backgrounds running to be that voice. And it's like what Ava 
David DuVernay said at the Teen Vogue Summit, she said, I realized no one else was going to speak for me and I needed to be there. That's and right. so, you know, that I am excited about. Right. Um, and so uh, certainly, you know, when people reach out and they're, they have some hurdles, um, you know, I'm always interested. Uh, how, how would they be able to reach you? So we are. We have our lovely little website. Um, I'm Johanna at globalsitroom.com. So okay. pretty easy. You can find us. No problem <laughs> at all. So, Johanna, I want to thank. There's a thousand things that we'll probably talk I'm about sure a little we could more. Talk longer. But thank you so much for I the time. Just love I appreciate your shoes. you. Oh, I need thank to you. have those shoes I, with this suit. I will reach out to and my people at Puma. It. I've got you. That's that is not a problem. It's such thank a pleasure. You thank so you so much. much. Truly, thank you. <laughs>